when we talk about value, we, we can't be overly concerned with the condition of said item, right? Where it came from, where it's been, how it looks, you know, what it doesn't look like. Uh, the value is on, is on the inside. The value is determined uh, within, you know, that particular item. Regardless of where we started, what we've been through, um, where we are right now, where we may not be where we want to be, it does not make us invaluable. You know, we, we should never allow someone else's opinion to cause us to diminish our value, right? It doesn't matter what they say about me. It doesn't matter how they view me. You know, it doesn't matter if you're being overlooked. You know, your value is internal. What's up, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the new episode of the Miles High Podcast. This is Miles Jr., your host. And as always, the vision for this podcast is to entertain, educate, and elevate you miles high above your fears, your doubts, and any limitations that you may think exist, always knowing that those limitations only exist in your mind. All right? So for this part, I wanted to have a conversation about value. And I remember, I remember seeing this illustration uh, several years back, right? Um, and it was, a, it was with, they were using a, a dollar bill, right? And just imagine I have a dollar bill and I'm holding it up to you. And I'm folding this dollar bill uh, into a very small piece of paper, right? I take that dollar bill, I put it on the ground, I stamp on that dollar bill. I take that dollar bill and I roll it around on the ground. It gets super dirty. I take that dollar bill and I crush it as, as hard and as small as I could. Uh, I take this dollar bill and I, I beat it on the ground. I toss it on the ground, toss it against a wall, uh, you know, doing as much damage to this dollar bill as I possibly could. And then I ask you, you know, I, I pull the dollar bill up. I, I, I pull the dollar bill up. I lift the dollar bill up. I unfold it, right? And with all the wrinkles and the dirt and the stuff on it, I ask you, how much is this dollar bill worth? And your answer is going to be someone in the room. A dollar. It's going to be worth a dollar. And, you know, I saw that illustration and it, it, it just, it, it reminded me because it wasn't the first time I, you know, heard this principle or learned this principle, but it reminded me of how important value is, right? And when we talk about value, we, we can't be overly concerned with the condition of said item, right? Where it came from, where it's been, how it looks, you know, what it doesn't look like. Uh, the value is on, is on the inside. The value is determined, uh, within you know that particular item so just like the dollar bill you know we must look at ourselves the same way right regardless of where we started what we've been through um where we are right now where we may not be where we want to be it does not make us invaluable um what people say about us you know what people say towards us what people don't say you know if we're not getting any recognition uh, it doesn't it doesn't determine our value you know we, we should never allow someone else's opinion to cause us to diminish our value right it doesn't matter what they say about me it doesn't matter how they view me you know, it doesn't matter if you're being overlooked you know your value is internal um you know and i i, I just remember my dad always teaching me this principle of value right he, he taught me two principles of, of, about value the first was uh the difference in value that that we as individuals have for things right so we he and i were discussing one day uh selling a piece of property that we had and you know we discussed price that we wanted to sell it for uh my price was much higher than his uh me being ambitious um and, you know, it just was no never mind to him. It was like, okay, cool, you know, you could list it for whatever you want, basically. And I was like, you don't want to agree on a price? And he was like, well, 
you know, the price that we uh, put on the the property uh, really isn't going to make that much of a difference because the 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 value of that property is going to be what someone else is willing to pay for it, right? And like I remember hearing that for the first time and not understanding it. I'll be honest at first and just being a bit confused as to you know if someone uh, if the value of the property that I have is worth what someone else wants to pay for, then if they're not willing to pay my price, then I'm not going to sell it, right? That's that was my my mindset behind it. But then when I dug a little deeper, like a, and he and I kind of talked about it some more, I, I really started to, un, to understand the principle behind it, right? It really had nothing to do with the property itself or the price of the property or even what someone was willing to pay for the property, right? It was a principle behind this, right? Because the value that we have on something um, is our value, right? What we determine, what we determine, like we want to value this item at, but the true worth, right? The true value of the item or oh, I should say the, 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 the value worth of exchange for the item is, is based on what someone, someone is willing to pay for it. Um, you know, and I guess Sharice could attest to this, especially with, with social media. And, 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 you know, any person that has ever started a business or, or sold a product or, or anything, right? A lot of the times we produce things, right? We... We make things available to the public that we've either created or, um, you know, came up with in our minds as an idea and, and brought to the masses, whether it was a product or service, you know, whatever that is. Um, Sharice with social media, you know, she and I have this conversation all the time. Um, but, let, but let me get to the point first and I'll get to Sharice. So, you know, sometimes the, the, the product that we envision or the service that we envision that we want to sell isn't the product that the consumers want, and I, I tell people as much as a, I, I, I as much times as I get to, I try to tell people like, man, sometimes you just have to put put stuff out there and see what sticks, right? Um, because a lot of the times, the things that we are like working hard at, right, putting a lot of effort behind um, to make perfect, at least what we deem as perfect for like the public or the consumers or whoever we want to uh, interact with what it is that we're providing or what we're serving. If, uh, if they don't like that product, they're not going to buy that product or they're not going to make use of that product. Um, you know, Sharice has, you know, she's been uh, being an influencer for, you know, quite some time and, you know, she has done travel vlogs she's done it all hair vlogs she's done like all of these um uh content right she's created all of this content and sometimes the content that she, that she creates the ones that uh get all of the views is she's she is like man like i don't even like why is this getting as much views as it's getting like this doesn't make any sense to me right because the value that I'm putting on what I'm doing here isn't in my eyes higher than, you know, this other content that I'm creating that I, I wish people would gravitate more towards. Um, you know, and I always tell her like, you can't determine what your audience likes, right? You have to listen to your audience, see what they're gravitating towards and then make more of that or do more of that. Um, and, and that's kind of like what we should look at value. Now, now I'm not saying that you should allow others to determine the value of things but what i'm saying is value the valuation of like services right um because there's a difference between the value that we have in ourselves that we place on ourselves or that we should what, what we should value ourselves versus what we value you know something that we're providing whether it's a product or service so so the value that we place on ourselves is is based on uh the work that we put in, right? The, the development that we have, the education that we have, the wisdom that we have, how we are able to apply that information. Uh, and then what my dad taught me was, man, the, the value that we place on, on, on stuff, right? On items, on services, on products. Uh, essentially, it's determined by the consumer. Um, and, you know, that was an, an important principle for me because, you know, I always, I used to, to think that, man, if, you know, I create a product or service and I make it available to the public, 
Like I'm gonna set a price and be firm in that price. And if you don't want to pay for uh, my product or service, then you know you just don't don't buy it. Uh, but you know, in the long run, like we hurt ourselves as businessmen. Now you don't want to undervalue your service or product, but at the same time, you have to pay attention to the public, pay attention to consumers. Um, and you know, same way like I was telling Sharice, like you. Have to un, you have to listen to what your audience is asking for. So whether that's you know more of the content that you, not that you don't like to create, but you know, but the content that I guess isn't as fun for you to create or, or whatnot. Like that's I think you know your audience tells you what they like, right? Yeah, I agree in that instance. But I need to backtrack. Sometimes when you set your prices and then you have people who don't agree with your prices you have to stand firm to say this is my price because my price is my price and i put that value into it and that just shows you that maybe your your target market is incorrect for what you're selling because maybe you can't afford or you don't see the value in my product but someone else does so i think don't don't think that you your price is you know you have to change your price based on the fact that some people won't agree with it. You just have to find the right market for you because someone is going to pay you what you are charging. Mm -hmm. I think this segues into my, my next point, right? This, this next principle that my, my dad taught me about value, right? And it's, you know, he always says that if you want to be successful, don't chase success, mm -hmm. you know, become a person of value. Um, so you, you have to be, become valuable, right? You have to show value so you know just speaking with setting prices right so if you're i think you're able to um be firm on your pricing when you've already established yourself right establish whether it's a brand establish your name establish your business your product your service like you've been around you've been tested you've you know been uh accepted by the the customer base and you know, you're, you you could be pretty firm, but if you're new, right? You're you're new to the market. You're new to whatever industry it is that you're in. I think you have to become valuable, right? So you have to show your value. So sometimes you, you know, could start. You have to start off by you know maybe giving stuff away for free or giving stuff away at a super discount. Uh, and you know that's what I'm talking about more so than than anything else, right? Because once you're established, you know you you have a lot of um, uh, leeway to say, man, you know, I'm not going to uh, lessen my value because someone says that they can't afford me, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, I think it's important that we, we stand firm and, and remain to the level of value that we see ourselves or the level of value that we want to attract. But at the same time, like if you're starting out and you're new, you know, to whatever industry or platform that you're on, uh, you you you're, you're gonna have to show your value right or you're gonna have to prove the value that you're bringing to to the table and i, I think a lot of times people try to you know off the bat they, they try to be firm on pricing like especially this this younger generation right where we want you know almost instant gratification like every idea that we come up with we think is the best idea every thing that we put our hands to we feel that it should work um, so a lot, a lot of times that, 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 that gets us into, uh, this cycle of, you know, starting things and not finishing because things aren't working out, uh, the way that we want them to. Um, but you know, like I say, you have to, you have to show or create the value for yourself or your service or the, or the product that you're bringing to the table. And that takes time. And, you know, that takes you, you know, doing it for free, doing it at a discount, uh, maybe, uh, undervaluing yourself for a period of time so that you can build up the customer base, the clientele and, and whatnot. You agree? Yeah, I agree. So no pushback. Mm -mm. That's the first. <laughs> Don't roll the eye. <laughs> so, you know, again, it's, it's, you know, we're talking about, at least I'm, I, I wanted to discuss like internal value uh, and then the external values that we, internal values that we place in ourselves and the external values that we place on the things around us or the things that we may be creating, right? Our value, um, I, I feel like it, it should be something that we are continually working on, right? Like I, I'm, I'm just big on continual growth, right? Continual learning, never, never not learning, never not gaining new information, never not learning new ways to do things. 
um, that increases value, right? Because as industry changes, as the economy changes, there are going to be things that pop up that, you know, that reflects a skill that we have that we can take advantage of, right? That we can put to work uh, and, you know, create a, a new stream of income, new stream of revenue, a new stream of customer uh, customers to our our brand or ourselves, you know, however that looks. And I think that comes because we're continuing to de- continually developing ourselves. And then there's a vo- the value that we place on the things that we're doing. And again, we, we have to create or show or prove, show and prove the value that we're bringing, the value that this product has. Um, and sometimes it's it's a it's a long journey, right? It's a long journey to get to the point where we can we can call our own shots, right? We can name our own pricing, and we can be firm on that. Um, but that doesn't mean that you aren't valuable, right? At the end of the day, um, we're all valuable, right? We we all contain a, a, a high level of value within us. But we have to we have to develop that, right? We have to show and prove that, right? It's not something that is just there that you know we pop up one day and yo, hello, I'm valuable, right? It doesn't work like that, right? But it takes work work for us to gain our worth, um, and it's not something that, that's going to happen overnight, right? We have to be patient with it. Um, so when I'm when I'm you know when I say know your value, I'm, I'm talking about uh, know who you are, what you're worth. And then the things that you're doing, know the value that you're bringing to where you are including those things, right? Whether you have a skill or a talent or you're creative, um, what you're doing is valuable, right? But it's, you have to find where that value is best served. Um, uh, and if, you know, if, as, as, as you work towards uh, creating that value for yourself, uh, just continue to be positive, man. Continue to not let others discourage you not let uh, others uh their their view of you their opinions of you their opinions of what it is that you're doing to, to cause you to second guess yourself um but we all go through it right uh, you know i've had enough conversations with my wife about man does this make sense like what is, does, am i making sense like does this this something that i want to continue right and she she's had conversations with me on the same light right with um the things that she does from a creative content standpoint. Um, so once we realize our internal value, um, you know, I feel like we're, we're going to be able to, you know, extend that externally, right? And the things that we're doing, uh, the people that we're doing it for or doing it to, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be able to really understand the, the true value that we bring, the true value that we are, the true value that we possess. Um, and you have to be okay with people not seeing your value. Absolutely. I mean, everyone isn't going to to love what you do. Um, and I think I've, I've, I learned it from a young age, right? So it, it, it's, you know, I know that every, you know, I, I one of my uh, pods that I did was where I said, we're not for everyone. And in the same way, like things that we do, like everyone isn't going to see the value in it. They're not going to find it valuable for them. Uh, so like Sheree says, you have to find your audience. You have to find your crowd. Um, and... You find know, f- your people. find the people that uh, respect and value what it is that you do, what it is that you bring to the world, what did you, what it is that you bring to their lives. All right. Uh, so know your value, man. Don't, don't. Let's, let's not diminish ourselves. Let's not devalue ourselves. Uh, my question would be like, what will be the metrics to determine your self value? Because like, it depends on what you do. Like, how do you determine yourself? the value of yourself do you look externally to other persons or how does that work no so so i our value comes from first of all like our abilities like what what are we good at like what what are the things that i'm capable of doing that stands out from others right so it's not that i'm going to be like if you're a singer or uh you play video games right i'm the best gamer you're not going to be the best gamer all the time right but the way that you create and continue to create value for yourself is through practice, right? Through being committed to what it is that you're you're doing, uh, perfecting your craft, continuing to work at it, and then as you uh, display that gift, um, someone is going to find the value in it in what it is that you that you do. Now it may not be where you want it, right? So because you may see yourself as being, you know, one of the biggest gamers in in the world, right? But someone may see your value in being able to teach uh gaming right or being able to 
mentor kids like there there's a lot of ways that we can become valuable in different areas of life and this is this is the this speaks to the part where i say sometimes you have to let your audience determine where your value where, where you are most valuable right because we have this mindset of uh, we, we have this 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 vision sometimes of like where we want our journey to go and how where we succeed how we how we see our success going and a lot of the times our success is like completely different than, than what we see, right? We could still get to the end point, but uh, how we get there is, is, is normally different. Um, and usually it's those who aren't able to adjust and, you know, kind of veer off what they think the vision of success should be are the ones who aren't super successful because they don't adapt to what it is that the audience is asking for, right? Um, because once you like once if if you adjust and and adapt to what the audience wants and you gain success in that lane a lot of times you'll be able to pivot and actually do what it is that you want to do right because you've been able to create so much value in, in one aspect you've gained uh, the notoriety and the acceptance or, or you've been able to build your brand to the point where okay man i, I could venture off and, and do what it is that i want but it starts with like knowing you like knowing what you're good at who you know knowing who you are knowing the value that you have within right and um uh, determining that man i'm going to be as open to uh displaying and increasing my value as as i can um i don't want to limit myself i don't want to put myself in a box i'm going to let this this platform this audience like really determine uh what my value, what the possibilities of of my value could be. I want to chime in. Mm -hmm. So in the world we live in today, people are always talking about oh, what your metrics are, what your metrics are. And I think this has kind of scared people into not believing or not understanding what their true value is in a sense. I have a story. A lot of companies hit me up. Either they want me to review things for free or they want to do a comments, an exchange where I would review something and they would give me entrance into things or, you know, the ability to enjoy whatever it is I'm promoting. Mm -hmm. um, and a particular company hit me up and I, and I kind of was, it was a big company who was capable of paying if, sh if, if they wanted to. Um, paying you for the Paying promotion. me for promoting mm -hmm. whatever it is they wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. But it was such a slap in the face because... The way you are perceiving me isn't the way that I perceive myself. Mm -hmm. So if I was someone who did not know my value, I would have taken on the project because it's a big company. Um, and I want to be seen as someone who is aligned with this brand. But no, you hit me up because you know my value. Mm -hmm. So if you know my value, you should be able to pay me whatever I ask you to pay me. Mm -hmm. So I think in this, this world that we live in today, I think it's super important to know that whatever you think your value is, that's what your value is. And someone will pay for it because even, even when you look at larger influencers who have like 100,000 followers versus say an influencer who has $50,000, many times followers. It, followers, many times an influencer with $50,000 can demand followers, followers <laughs> can demand more money than someone with $100,000 because they followers. know followers. <laughs> followers <laughs> because they know their value <laughs> it coming i feel it it, it, it coming so you just have like smaller influencers they are able to demand that money because they're they're not budget this is what i bring to the table this is how long i've been doing this i don't care if you have someone who has a hundred thousand followers there you go. this is what i'm charging and many times you just have to step out on a on a ledge and say, this is what I want. Yeah, and you know, I think that brings up a good point too, right? Because I'm saying, or oh, I said, uh, you know, sometimes you have to uh, discount your, your value or discount what it mm -hmm. is that you think you're worth just so that you can gain traction and, you know, gain a, a, a foot in, in whatever industry that is. Uh, but sometimes, like, you don't have to do that, right? Mm -hmm. But just know that if you, if you take the route of, man, I'm not going to diminish my value, then... It, it may take a little longer, yeah. right? It's, you're going to have to be a, a lot more patient, right? Because you're going to have to wait for, wait for your tribe, wait, wait mm -hmm. for that, that audience that is going to value the way that you, you value yourself. Yeah, and we also see it causes a lot of, a lot of, I guess, 
problems in any type of industry now because when you have people doing so much of the same thing mm -hmm. a lot of people are undervaluing their goods their services and it makes it hard for people who actually are giving a good product across all industries mm -hmm. you know construction media mm -hmm. you know you see people doing things that you would charge full price they they're charging you know a, Fifty dollars. I, I give you that for twenty five dollars. You you don't know your you don't know your value. You get what you pay for. It, you also get what you pay for. So, mm -hmm. just know your value and trust that you know what you're doing and you can demand whatever you ask for. No, absolutely, absolutely. Anyone else want to chime in? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man. I, I I you know I again. Sharice and I have these type of conversations all the time. Um, you know, there's always a company that hits her up and wants her to, to promote, you know, a product or, or promote something. And, you know, they they won't give up pennies on the dollar. And it's like, come on, bro. Listen, you hit me, you hit me I've up been for in the reason. game from before it was a game. <laughs> like, don't play me like that. Oh, I could man. buy my own shampoo. <laughs> oh, man. But know your value, right? That's, I think that's, that's the, the principle that I, I want to get across. Um, you know, don't chase success, you know, just become a person of value and, and success is going to follow um, in every aspect of your life. All right. Brings us to the segment of the pod where I want to leave with you a milestone. Today's milestone is a quote by M. Scott Peck, right? And it says, until you value yourself, you won't value your time. And until you value your time, you will not do anything with it. Um, I think this shows the importance of, of creating value, right? Understanding our value, knowing our value. Because once we value ourselves, like we're not going to waste time with things that aren't valuable to us. Um, and in turn, right, we're going to put a lot of our energy into the things that bring value to our lives. All right. So let's, let's, um, let's know our value, right? Let's start to value ourselves. Uh, at the level, at the worth that we we know we are, that we know we should be, all right? Brings us to the end of this pod. Um, hopefully this was an informative one. Uh, hopefully you learned something, right? Because, you know, as always, my, my vision and my goal is to entertain, educate, and elevate you miles high above your fears, your doubts, and any limitations that you may think exist always knowing that those limitations only exist in your mind. All right, until next time, you guys stay blessed.